Hello, in this video I'm gonna cover a game between Alireza Firuzia and Richard Rapport from the Norway Chess. We had a Sicilian, Rapport chose knight c6 and Alireza went with uh, Rosolima with bishop b5. And now the most common moves are g6 or e6. A Rapport plays I think the third option here, knight f6, which is also a very nice move, developing move. Alireza defends this pawn on e4 by knight c3. And now black goes with knight d4, challenging this bishop on b5, trying to gain a tempo to kick this bishop away from b5. The white cannot capture on d4, because black recaptures and takes the central pawn on e4. Now knight e2 is possible, but black takes on e4, knight d4, and after a6, let's say bishop a4, knight c5, going back to b3, and after e6, black has no problems. Also, after cd4, knight d5 doesn't offer plenty of compensation for the pawn after knight e4. If white tries something like queen f3 or queen g4, black goes back to d6 and finishes developing by e6. Black will have a full center with d5 and e5. So let's go back to the game. Uh, Firozia didn't take on d4. He played e5 here. Trying to upset this knight on f6. If knight goes back to g8, that's not really what black planned. Going back to the 8 rank with only one piece developed and that one piece might be exchanged on the next move. So here black took on b5 and the plan is that after white took, black goes to d5 now. It doesn't have to go to g8. Firuzia castled here. A move which is interesting in this position is knight g5. And just to illustrate how dangerous this move can be, if black does something natural like e6, white goes knight e4 and gets to d6. And black has plenty of problems now because the, he cannot stop knight e6 on the next move, ruining the castling rights for himself. Black will just end up being in so much trouble because of that. And here a move like f6 might solve some problems for black, but we'll not go that deep into the analysis there. Firuzia chose to castle, black kicks away the knight by move a6, and now white plays an in-between move, c4, trying to challenge this knight from d5, and Rapport plays knight b4. It was also possible to go to b6, after knight c3 black can capture, but it leads to a very complex position. White is uh, ahead in development. I really don't like black's position here. He chose a different move, knight b4, and now white goes back. And here black can try to eliminate the bishop on c1 by knight d3, but after queen e2 capturing rook a c1, there is no easy way to develop. If he tries with g6, there is queen e3. The c5 pawn is a problem. If black defends by queen c7 or queen b6, then white has knight d5 with tempo and uh, moves like e6 don't come to consideration because they drastically weaken the squares around the king and that's just no good. So knight d3, although it seems at first glance good, I wouldn't recommend it. So that's why black wants to develop as fast as possible and to play to open up his bishops. He plays the move d6. And now d4 by white, trying to activate his bishop by pushing d4. And now Rapport took on d4. For example, if he took on e5 here, now white doesn't recapture. He plays d5 and now this knight on b4 is a bit in trouble because on the next move white is going to play a3 and try to trap the knight. So for example, if uh, black plays bishop f5, white can simply take and there is no knight c2 because of g4 and the bishop is quite awkward if you capture i take on f5 and eventually this knight on a1 will hang also there are ideas like queen a4 on the next move using the fact that there's no defensive piece around the black's king and that's just not a good, new a good news for black rapport took on d4 and queen takes now you might think what is happening here he didn't have any other choice if he took with the knight then just d5 works. He had something else in mind. 
for the exchange he's going to hinder black's development and that's going to be uh, enough compensation for the exchange and now rapport played principally knight c2 queen e4 by Firuzia, and now he took white develops by bishop f4 all his pieces are in the play and now bishop e6 trying to somehow close the e file trying to prevent ed6 now Firuzia takes time to capture the knight on a1 rook c8 and now knight d5 trying to block the bishop from e6 targeting the c4 pawn also it was good to play b3 here and in case of taking to take with the bishop and you still see that the bishop on f8 is out of the game it's not easy for black to play this position at all if queen d7 rook goes to d1 and after queen c6 knight d5 it's still a very very unpleasant position for black he cannot fian Keto because of his uh, his rook on h8. It's not really something I would like to play. But instead he chose a different move, knight d5. Doesn't want to spend time on b3. And now black took, knight captures and f6. And eventually he wants to get his king to f7 because there's no other way to develop. Knight goes back and now bishop d5 first. Uh, also it is possible to go for king f7 immediately. And in case of rook d1 to pin the queen, a black would not be so worried about it because the rook is not defended. If white wants to attack a black's queen, then he has to go back to e3 or c3, which is not as dangerous as the knight on d5. So black can just go queen d7 and in case of some discovered attack with knight e3, then just queen c6 and black is fine. If he doesn't do anything special, then black can go rook d8 next and have a good game. But he took on d5, cd, and now rook c5, trying to target the d5 pawn. Now Firuzia plays d6, and now queen d7, trying to hold on to this b7 pawn. For example, if he tries e5 here, now white has a nice sequence of moves. First, he plays b4. The point of this move is that he wants to kick the rook from the 5th rank. First, if black's rook tries to stay on the 5th rank, then a4 goes and if rook, rook b6 eventually then you can take on e5 and this leads to a very strong attack because if you capture takes now what can he do if he goes to d7 then queen f5 check if king c6 then this is a checkmate if he goes to e8 then just rook e1 wins on the spot if he goes to f7 then you have a nice combination you you give a check and now if g6 then you go queen d5 and now the problem is that after king f6 or king g7 white has at least bishop e5 and collects the rook e5 is not gonna work out for black he went for king d7 in the game and now b4 rook goes back to c6 and now rook e1 trying to hold to this pin on the e file and now the best move here was to play e5 now black is provoking white to capture on e5 to sacrifice. If bishop takes on e5 then king will go to d8 somehow try to escape. This is still a very complex position. Black doesn't have an easy time to defend this but I think it's possible to hold this. The more interesting variation is after knight takes e5. Takes, queen e5 and king d8. White can give a check on a5. A b6 doesn't work out because of bishop g5 and if king c8 just queen a6. And now a move like queen b7 is not possible because of rook e8. And after king d7 take the queen and take the rook in the end. So if we go back, king c8, queen a6. If he goes to b8, now I believe that b5 is just crushing. If it takes on d6, then bishop f4 is very strong and I don't believe that black can survive this. Even queen b6 is a, is a nice threat on the next move. It's a horrible position for black. But let's go back to the main to the main line of the sideline. After this check, king goes to c8. And now the only way to proceed this is to play b5, to try to open up the position. Now black cannot capture on b5 because of checkmate on a8. And if he goes to c5, now queen b6. If black's queen takes, first d7. Now king cannot take on d7 because of queen e6 and rook d1 which leads to either losing the queen for black or a checkmate. Black has to capture with the queen. 
after which queen a7 is very nice, threatening uh, queen a8. And after bishop d6, which is the only move to survive this, you can give a check. King c7, takes, takes, and after all of this, black has a very nice move, queen e5. Using the fact that uh, there is a weak back rank, defending the g7 pawn, attacking the rook, and buying some time for himself. And this position should be equal, but there is still some poison for sure. Instead, the Rapport plays king f7 in the game, now knight d4. Here he makes a decisive mistake, he plays e5. If he tried something like ed6, for example, after this check to lure the king out in the open with king g6, white would take bc, and after queen d3, queen f5, this, again, it seems like a very exposed position, but there is still some hope that uh, black can hold this position. Practically speaking, it's really unpleasant. Objectively, it should be fine for black. But instead, he plays e5. Now, Firuzia plays queen d5. King goes to g6, because if uh, king e8, it invites all sorts of sacrifices, or just capturing on c6 and playing it slowly. With king being on e8, it's not really appealing. You can take on e5, and if fe, just take on c6, and it's a very powerful initiative for white. If bc, then rook e5, king d8, this, and I think after king b8, you can just play queen b6, and after king c8, just get your rook to the other side. And I don't see a good way for Black to defend this because after queen b7 you push d7, deflecting the king or the queen. If queen takes, then rook a8 checkmate. And if king takes, then there's no defense on the queen, so it's lost for black. So after this, Rapport chose to play king g6. Now Firuzia took. And now if uh, black takes on e5 back, then white has knight e5 and he will capture on e5 on the next move. If queen takes on d6, knight e5. And how to save this position without losing a queen? If the king goes to h5, you can push g4. And if king h4, just check. King takes, queen g5 check, and a checkmate on e3. So it's a really unpleasant position. It's lost position. And the rapport chose to give back some material with rook d6. Firuzia took. And now bishop d6. If queen d6 here, now white has a nice move, queen e4 check. King cannot go to h6 because of knight f5. Going to h5 also doesn't make much sense because it's uh, really endangered there. You can play g4 and h4, luring the king to either h6 or h4, which leads to knight f5 check, losing the queen again. If the black king goes to f7, then queen e8 check is the simplest way to win the game. And after king g8, knight f5 with the following knight e7. And uh, black is just losing a queen. So because of that, Rapport chose to take with the bishop. And now Firuzia plays queen e4 check. It's not possible to cover with f5 because of queen e6, losing the bishop in the end. So he goes to f7, and they repeat, and now Firuze plays g3, trying to make some space for his king. Even though the material balance is uh, there, uh, the position of black's king is really unpleasant. Uh, there is also this pin on the d file with g3. White wanted to save himself from rook e8. He didn't want to allow rook e8. Because imagine that uh, white plays a random move like a3 here. Now black has an option to play rook e8. And now he can cheat, uh, cheat his way out of this uh, pin because of the back rank issues. Now the bishop is uh, not for free because there is checkmate on e1. So that would make black's life much easier than it should be. After g3, now there's no option of rook e8 because you just take. And after queen d6, there is no checkmate. So that's fine for white. And now black chose to play h6 here. To get his king some breathing space, white plays rook d1, indirectly hitting the bishop on d6. And how does black proceed? If he goes to e7, then knight f5 is very strong, targeting the bishop. 
If he goes to c7, then knight e6 is dangerous because the bishop hangs. A black chose to play rook e8 here, but now after knight f3, he attacks the bishop on d6. Rapport chose rook e6, and Firuzia gave a check. King h7, and now, very important, he gives a check on d3, followed by knight f5 next. For example, if king h8, now white plays knight f5 and he's going to capture the bishop on d6. And this is why in this position, after queen d3 check, Richard Rapport uh, resigned. But let me show you something else here. If white hurried here and went with knight f5 immediately, then black would have a nice defensive resource. Rook e5, taking this knight and entering uh, a drawn endgame, because now the king on h7 is relatively safe and uh, there's no danger. And this would be a quite disappointing uh, turn of events if uh, Firuzia allowed this. He didn't. That was it. If you have any suggestion for the game from 2021 you want me to cover, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.